the webinar. I hope uh, I'm audible. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to invite uh, some Sri Manish Garg to deliver the opening remarks on the I4C India AI CyberGuard AI Hackathon on its larger objectives and goals. Uh, Mr. Srimanika, can you please take the floor? Thank you so much. So, good morning, everyone. So, on behalf of Indian Cybercrime Coordination Center, Ministry of Home Affairs, I welcome you to this uh, webinar on uh, AI Hackathon being the held with the collaboration of mighty officials and teams. So I'm grateful to all of you for joining it. So first of all, I will give a brief background about the a problem statement, which is related to the AI hackathon. Uh, just a brief background. In the 1990s, we all have seen that uh, we used to stand in queues to pay our bills, etc. In the first decade of the present century, what happened, what change happened was the kind of digital revolution, the way the government services or the services offered by public institutions and private institutions are being rendered. And there, were, there was no longer the need for a queue. From the confines of your home, you could avail number of digital services. Another change happened in the second decade of present century. That was smartphone revolution. Now you need not to even sit on a PC. You could avail the similar services by using your phone. While you might be mobile moving across India and you could, could avail number of services. As these changes have made our life easier, there has another change happened. There has been a, this is all positive, but there is a negative change which has happened. The negative change is about the rise in cyber crime in the country. As our lives have got more and more intertwined with the digital world, criminals are also increasingly using different kind of modus operandi to dupe the citizens to defraud their hard earned money. So, this increase in cybercrime, the figures I will tell you later. First, uh, there is a conceptual uh, cl clarity regarding the cybercrime, how they are happening in the country. I give you one illustration, one example. That suppose a criminal is sitting in, uh, say, state of Bihar, maybe Jamtara region, and he is duping citizens which are located in the southern states, states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra, etc. And you know, in the cyber world, this is very much possible. But when it comes to registration of the FIR, it will be registered in Bihar. So, the Bihar police will have to, I mean, the victims located in the states of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, etc., they will have to have some redressal from the Bihar police for effective resolution of their grievances. Now here comes interstate jurisdictions uh, into question as law and order is a state subject. Keeping in mind all these technicalities and the resultant complexity, cyber criminals started making use of uh, loopholes in the available institutional structures to hit the citizens increasingly. I'll give, give you a few figures pertaining to, to the last five years. You can judge yourself from those figures that how cybercrime has increased. But one thing when cybercrime defies territorial jurisdictions, one thing was very much important for the state to manage cybercrime. That was that all cybercrime reported across India, across all the states and UTs of India, they must be reported on a single platform so that the data can be consolidated. It can be analyzed, researched. The recent modus operandi being used by the citizens, uh, by the cyber criminals, can be looked into for remedial actions by the law enforcement agencies. So in this regard, a big initiative was taken in the year 2019 by launching 
National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal. Now let's look at the figures which have uh, of cyber crimes which have been reported on the portal in the last five years. In the year 2029, only 26,000 cyber complaints were there. 2020, it was 2,55,000. 2021, it was 4,52,000. 2022, it was 10,29,000. 23, it was 15,96,000. And in the year 2024, by now, more than 18 lakh cyber crime complaints, thereby making, making a total of 52 lakh complaints over the last five years have been registered on National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal. The, the figures are just mind boggling, humongous, absolute numbers are increasing so much that we all need to act together to, to curb this men menace of uh, cyber crime. Now I come to the problem statement for this AI hackathon, which which we we will we would like your contribution to be in. The problem statement is that at present we are receiving seven thousand complaints on day to day basis, seven thousand complaints daily. It's humanly not possible for anyone to analyze those complaints. But before that, before uh, citizens file these complaints. These complaints are organized into different categories and subcategories. At present, we have got 30 plus subcategories in which these complaints are filed by the uh, citizens. If I look at uh, the names of those categories, we have got online and social media related crime, online financial frauds, hacking, online cyber trafficking, online gambling, ransomware, cryptocurrency crime, cyber terrorism and CPRGR, where content related to nudity, etc. are uploaded on, uh, on the online space. Now, these are the 10 broad categories. Within each category, there are a number of subcategories. For example, within the category of online financial fraud, we have got e-wallet related frauds, business email compromise, internet banking related fraud, debit, credit card frauds, skin swap, etc., etc. Now, as it, at present, a citizen, while lodging a complaint on the cybercrime reporting portal, is forced to select the category and subcategory. Now, citizen, because of lack of awareness, it is not uh, always possible that he knows the nitty-gritty and the technicality about all these categories and subcategories. So often what happens is he ends up choosing a wrong category. If a wrong category is chosen, then the whole analysis about the data which is uh, being managed at the NCRP, National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal, that, that goes, goes topsy-turvy. So that is primarily the problem statement. What we want you to uh, contribute to is to devise an NLP model, that is Natural Language Processing Model, to guide citizens in filing cyber crime reports on national cyber crime reporting portal correctly through a real time analysis of the description of the incident and media files uploaded by the citizen so the moment the citizen writes the description of the incident which has happened with him resulting in cyber crime automatically our portal will, will be guiding the, the citizen that this is the category and this is the subcategory in which your complaint falls into. Let's lo look at few of the real-time examples, few of the descriptions put in by the citizen on National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal that will make the whole thing more clear. Now, now uh, on the left hand side, on your, I, I hope the screen is visible to all of you. Standard templates for writing descriptions of the cyber crime. Yes, sir, it's visible. It's visible. Okay. Uh, on the left hand side are the subcategories mentioned. On the right hand side is the 
description uh, regarding the complaint which which is being filed by the citizen now le let me take one example of the sub category impersonation or account takeover now when the citizen is writing a description he would write something like this fraudsters created a fake account on social media using the details of the victim they then contacted the victim victim's friends and connections on social media saying they needed money as it was an emergency the victim's contacts lost rupees so and so the account url of the fraudster is so and so and the amount was transferred to so and so account so broadly that is what is expected from a citizen if his identity or account has been taken over by, by some fraudster now on the basis of keywords which figure in this description your job is to automatically assign a sub category and a broader category to this complaint that is the problem statement we look forward uh, you to solve and the action needs to happen in the real time that is uh, precisely the problem statement of course we have got another problem statement which is at present not part of this hackathon all this work will finally happen into a better analysis better research uh, and it will go on into checking um, cyber crime in the country so your contribution is going to be very much important for the citizens of india in facilitating seamless reporting of cyber crime and also for the law enforcement agencies located throughout the states who are finding these difficulties in handling the data which we are getting through national cyber crime reporting portal so that is from my side that uh, all about uh, the problem statement which you are uh, expected to solve for us for uh, indian cyber crime reporting center and uh, i would be too happy to answer any queries or questions you have got regarding this on this so now i will ask the mighty team to uh, come in and pitch in and uh, take the webinar forward please thank you so much shri manish gar uh, request uh, shrimati kavita bhatia to uh, brief us on the hackathon stru structure participation process and its incentives and the uh, walk through through the stages eligibility and prices thank you so much good morning all am i audible yes please uh, it's my privilege to in, uh, welcome you all to this webinar on the india ai cyber guard hackathon before we take you through the entire process just wanted to mention that india ai mission has been approved by government in march this mission has seven critical pillars which is basically meant to democratize ai reinforce india's ai leadership globally and ensure that the applications developed are safe and ethical and are for meant for social good so the seven pillars of the india ai mission the first one is compute the second one is the uh, large multimodal model the third one is the application development which is the focus of discussion today the fourth one is the skilling the fifth one is the startup um, pillar the seventh one is the safe and trusted pillar the focus of the today's discussion is basically on the application developed as a part of india ai uh, development initiative which will be developing application in the critical sector and will be having a large scale socio impact uh, in fact as a part of this pillar we had also initiated a innovation challenge uh, on five themes which has got close and this is the hackathon which we are doing it together with indian cyber crime coordination center which um, the previous speaker talked about the kind of uh, problems uh, they want us to help them to mitigate with the help of ai uh, this uh, innovation per hackathon will create a platform for the indian talent to contribute in strengthening the cyber security in india the hackathon is basically in three stages the first stage as was was mentioned by manish ji involves the uh, it's an online round and involves the participants to create a prototype of nlp based ai model for text classification and analytics the basic objective of the participants is to categorize the complaint based on the parameters such as fraud and the victim profile for which some of the data has been given 
the submissions will be evaluated based on the accuracy, precision, and F1 score. The top 20 teams of the stage one will be taken to the stage two, which is in person in Delhi, where the participants will work on the NCRP data to enhance their model and will be also tasked to develop an NLP model that guides the citizen in filling accurate cybercrime reports and emphasis will be on achieving high model accuracy. The best team, three teams of the stage two will be selected for the stage three where they will be piloting their application in the real world environment and the jury will be selecting the best team who will be getting an opportunity to work on the uh, real world problem. The eligibility criteria for this hackathon is that uh, the Indian companies and startup, the companies which are registered under the Company Act and have a 51% shareholding by the Indian citizens. The startups who have been registered uh, with DIPP or DIPIT, in the current context it is called as DIPIT, uh, can participate. Even the academic and the R&D institutions like IITs, NITs, IIITs, and the institutes uh, which are accredited to, from the AICT and NAC are eligible to participate. The autonomous bodies and the public sector organizations uh, who are basically into R&D can also participate and uh, can contribute. In fact, uh, as a special thing, we are also allowing the students and the researchers who are working professionals in the education institutes and are not uh, form any startup or company can also participate. Once they are selected in the stage three, they have to register either as a company or as a startup, depending upon the uh, fitment they fall into. The, as I said that the process is completely transparent. Anyone who is wanting to participate either as an individual or as a team, will have to register online and will have to submit their code on the GitHub or OpenForge. In fact, the uh, team, if they're participating as a team, should have a team lead who can complete the entire application and manage the submissions. And uh, the team which is getting uh, selected will then have to set up a startup or a company, as I mentioned just now. Uh, we will, in fact, uh, this will, uh, this whole hackathon will uh, not only give the financial incentive, but will also offer uh, participants a greater visibility, a networking opportunity. We will help them connect to the industry, the government officials, and they will also be working on the real world uh, challenges. As a financial incentives to participate and to contribute in the cause, uh, the first prize uh, has been announced as 25 lakhs and they will be the ones who will work uh, help in the national rollout. The second prize is the seven lakh and the third prize is three lakh. In fact, we would like all yeah, teams, we would in fact uh, give a special prize of five lakh to the all women teams so that we also have more of female participating in the national cause. This is the entire process and the eligibility criteria of the uh, hackathon. I am there to answer to any queries if you have. Thank you. And I would now request Anurag to call the other speakers. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ma'am. Going forward, we are going to have a panel discussion on leveraging AI for cybersecurity uh, opportunities, challenges, and future trends. And uh, to the, the panelists on this uh, topic are Vinayak Gotse, CEO DSI, uh, DSCI, Rahul Agarwala, Managing Partner Sense AI Ventures, and Abhila Sondarajan, Founder and CEO of Priva Sapien. I'd kindly uh, ask the uh, panelists to take the floor and uh, please start. Thank you so much. Um, Vinayakji, you can go ahead first. Yeah, so um, uh, there is one more speaker, right? Rahul Agrawal? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, think... I am here. I am here. Um, I'm just getting to a room. I'll be able to put on my video after that. Okay. 
Yeah, so I mean, I'm glad to see this hackathon. Um, and I'm aware about this problem because we work with MH and uh, developing an LP solution like this would really help a lot. But this this discussion, we would deliberate on how do you uh, really uh, leverage uh, AI for cybersecurity and um, also some of the challenges of AI uh, uh, that it poses basically, right? So I'll start with Abhilash till the time Rahul comes on the screen. So Abhilash, uh, how, how do you see uh, and you work on a challenges and issues of AI, right? And you had been building solutions for AI governance, basically, right? So if you can help uh, understand uh, the challenges that AI poses to both security, privacy, and uh, we'll talk about solution, but first of all, let's deliberate on challenges. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, first of all, uh, Meeti, to have me in the panel, and thank you, Vinayak, sir, uh, for a great question. Um, so this is a very fundamental problem. Uh, cybersecurity, especially with AI, um, because it significantly amplifies the problem uh, for everybody in the ecosystem. It can be at a data level, it can be at a model training level, or it can be at an inference level. And this inference can help accelerate attacks. For example, an attacker, it becomes much more easier for an attacker to build strategies in attacking people. As some of the use cases that we start, we, we saw being presented by Manish Karji as well. It's very easy for an attacker to go and ask a large language model, how do I convince somebody in um, building up a convincing narrative? And this, he cannot he not have a one strategy. He can, every time he can create a new strategy using a model. And it can be created in different languages. It can be used for, targeted for different personas. Even voice can be modified. Images can be created. Um, fake information can be created. This is a very fundamental problem. And uh, uh, when we have such a large population uh, and many of them are vulnerable, it becomes very, very critical to protect them. I think it's a great step for um, the ministry uh, to take initiative in this direction. I think, uh, you know, having a coordinated effort across the country will play a very important role and protecting our citizens from the downfalls of um, AI is very, very critical. I think it's a very, very timely initiative. And uh, there are these are some flavors of challenges, and then this this goes on and on. Like we, you get a, a booster shot sort of thing, you know. And this for everybody, even a you know hacker or a you know a people with malicious intent may also use it. So the right kind of guardrails become very important. But it's a very important problem to solve solve globally. You have to really understand this better, right? So, so if you look at means the producer especially those who are uh, designing those models up and right so so they they need to look at different different contexts uh, and join them and process them so that you you create a, a kind of modus operandi right and so one is uh, doing recon right all of us are digital footprint and uh, getting hold of this digital footprint and uh, understanding the relation between this footprint and uh, footprint of a different people. For example, uh, you can separately look at the footprint of a father or mother, and then you can look at uh, footprint of uh, uh, their uh, their kids and join that and then create a kind of modus operandi in digital arrest is going largely that perspective, right? And then you call your parents talking about their kid and talk about uh, something will happen to them and this and the, the video call which comes in basically right so earlier uh, this, it would need a lot of time to collect this information right then there will be a lot of time that will to establish relation between those information and then you devise the modus operandi basically so that time is significantly came down uh, doing recon uh, and also uh, understanding the relation and also creating modus operandi came down quite significantly. So one is about this part. Second part is like, uh, once you do that, then you need to create that content which could convince uh, a victim, basically, possible victim, basically, right? So maybe uh, some voice, maybe some video, maybe some kind of a scenarios, basically, right? As you rightly said, basically, right? So that's also become easy. One part is processing those contexts and processing those footprint and other part is creating something which can convince the uh, uh, convince the uh, uh, the victim basically right so so these 
two things basically is uh, becoming very uh, important from the fraud uh, and security perspective, basically. So can you dwell into uh, this, like, uh, uh, what more that you see, basically, in such kind of uh, 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 scenario, basically? Yeah, so, uh, sir, you put it uh, with great... Uh inside on the image content collection by the fraudsters as well right which is which is the input side of uh, part where they are collecting information from lot of sources just your whatsapp dp image lot of times people fancily put image of their kids um you know a lot of times and then these are sensitive information similarly profile social media profiles open like instagram information where you cautious uh, without much of caution speak about family things and background travel financial a lot of things we advertise and publish and with this a lot of personal information goes out in the public and this is one of the very important inputs and with these images today it's very important easy to create you know somebody looking at some place sometime with an input image and make somebody being there at a being a specific place for example um a hey, your father was standing in front of the Kendra Bank ATM near your house and then he fell down. I have taken him to hospital. Give me some money. Uh, you know, we are going through some stuff. Like, let's say they know that their person is uh, abroad traveling or something based on uh, some pictures posted on LinkedIn or uh, other social media platforms and they track and identify and then they can create concoct, build stories, narratives, images. Um, so these are becoming very, very easy. Anybody with the right kind of knowledge can do it today. And this becomes a major problem. So to understand it, mitigate it, is it becoming a much bigger challenge. Um, I think that that's a very important challenge that we see in the ecosystem. So one is the kind of information the fraudsters collect. And with that, with the Gen AI, with the power of Gen AI, primarily with social, social media and other uh, public information. And second is um, information they create based on this to build that narrative and engage on that fraud in the ecosystem. I think these are becoming significantly accelerated with uh, first the social media wave and second now the Gen AI wave. Yeah, so Rahul, uh, uh, you, oh, you run. Uh, sure. Uh, so now, yeah, yeah, thank you for one inviting me here. I'm sorry for being late. Uh, so I think the challenges, I think some of the key challenges other speakers have talked about, but I think AI fundamentally changes how humans, so what is our security system? If you look at people and what is our security, we trust what we see and what we hear. Now using Gen AI, you can actually create fake videos, which exactly look like the person. You can replicate phone calls, which really sound like your relative, your so imagine your child calling you and asking you for uh, help because they, they are in trouble. And it sounds like your child, you will give the help they require. You might share bank details, you might share credit card details, X, Y, Z. So, so Gen AI creates the way content can be created, digital content can be created. It sounds very authentic, looks very authentic. And that poses itself a challenge. And as human beings, we'll have to think it is not just something which technology will solve, right? Uh, we need to think about that. On the other side, I mean, my view is AI has been used to attack systems, right? Um, whether it is cyber attacks, all kinds of bots, everything. You need on the protection side also, yeah. AI can only, because, uh, you know, when you have attackers using AI, they can create new patterns of attacks. And literally the attack is endless, right? I mean, it can just go on. It works 24 uh, seven, depending on the number of computers used for the attack, it can just scale. So on the defense side also, people and companies need to think how they how do they defend themselves? I think these are some of the challenges we need to think about and uh, would love to support companies coming out of India, which solve some of these challenges. So like, let's look at now, how can you leverage AI for uh, uh, solving security problem and also uh, in this particular case uh, uh, resolving some of the cyber crime issues as well. Right? So uh, Rahul, can you, because you are with you, so can you look at uh, possible uh, contributions that AI can make 
to uh, to solve uh, cyber security problem and more importantly solve uh, resolving the cyber crime issues as well sure so on the cyber security side uh, i would say that you know look at ai is very good at patterns and when you have cyber attacks basically there's a lot of data and if you can see the patterns you can understand there's an attack going on uh, whether it is uh, i mean anything which is exceptional anything which is uh, out of the normal abnormal behavior you should be able, because patterns get established over time so uh, anything which is correct typically falls into a pattern sometimes it doesn't the exceptions also which are not abuse are not attack are not crime but typically you'll find that from which device is being used where the device is connecting to the internet from uh, what are the kind of requests how quickly those requests are coming what are the apps installed i mean there's so much data and some of this is not possible for humans to really be in the loop all the time right uh, so automated cyber defenses which take into account all these factors and find the patterns and learn new patterns as they emerge is something which we think is uh, something uh, startup should be looking at and we've seen a few startups which aim at that and this has all kinds of uh, various levels right from fraud in financial transactions to of course the cyber crime kind of things that you're talking about see some of this can be installed even at network levels right i mean if you take a where people are just generating traffic to uh, you know overwhelm a server it's at the network level it is very visible yeah, that an yeah. attack is going on right yeah, it so, may not be yeah yeah so until now largely we understand that security require control but nowadays uh, most of the security capabilities especially are now talking about uh, intelligence driven action so ai driven action basically so be it network be it application be it data security so most of those capabilities are now increasingly going ai powered kind of capabilities basically right until now it was more black box ai you have your data and you are working on the data but increasingly people are also using llm uh, 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 to to solve some of the security problems basically right so Avilash, uh, you also leverage uh, uh, AI and there could be some explanation you must be doing with general AI as well, basically. Can you delve into how AI comes to need? Yes, it produces a lot of problem, but how can it uh, help you to solve some of the problem? Absolutely. So as we were discussing, it has to, the, the attacks which are coming. So prompt is a new channel of attack. We were discussing about channel of attack, networking being channel of attack, etc. Now, prompts are a new channel of attack. Um, now, through this prompt, somebody, let us say, is asking for a fake image to be created for the context that we are discussing about, right? Um, this is the person, give an image of this person standing in this place, in this context and things like those. Um, there is a responsibility for the model developers to enforce as well. This is what we are beginning to see across the globe, where the right use and misuse of large language models are being questioned and guardrails are becoming very, very critical. For example, we are working in a you know Google cohort um, where uh, we are discussing about some of these guardrails which can be put around, let us say, a Gemini or a Gemma model. Or similarly, you know, how do you put something like this in front of, let's say, OpenAI? Or if you are, as an enterprise, you're offering services to your customers, let us say a large bank wants to offer its services to its customers. Now, the bank's model can be attacked uh, to extract sensitive information about high net individuals or which person made which transaction, which place, if the guardrails are not in place, and if a bank trains a model uh, based on all its data. So there are various kinds of risks which are coming out of this. And now AI, we are building things like small language models, which will guard lang large language models. Because large language model has almost you know, read the whole internet and it has a lot of in intelligence, along with organizational specific information as well. And this is very, very precious. It has to be protected uh, and it has to be used for the right purpose. So model safety, model security, governance become very pivotal along with privacy as well data privacy. So when we put these guardrails around, then the deployment becomes very, very secure and safe. So today we are like how we were in the early late 90s or early 2000s where 
models are like B2C today, where you put a model, it's more like blogs of the internet era, uh, right? Um, now, banks have to put like digital banking sites, which are very different from putting a blog. Similarly, today there are large language models which are enabling common citizens. But when enterprise has to adopt it for its business requirements, it becomes much, much complex as similar to putting a block side uh, site versus to a digital banking site. It has a lot of intricacies, a lot of regulatory obligations which come, industry-specific obligations or, you know, uh, regulation uh, region specific for example india's dpdp if you are taking data and training a model what are the obligations because this tomorrow this may become a source of an attacker to extract personal information about people from a model which is published right then yeah. both things are available in the same place so this is how this is evolving this is how it has to be prevented this is how globally as well this shape is evolving yeah so uh, rahul there is one question uh, no, so Sorry, yeah, yeah. before that, I just want to, uh, you know, respond to what Abhilash said and uh, double click on one thing which he mentioned, which was very, very critical, which is small language models. I mean, there is a lot of excitement around large language models, but the fact of the matter is that they are very, very expensive and capital intensive to develop and run and train and keep updated, right? The pace of change in the models we've seen, you've seen how many generations have already come out. Uh, I think for a country like India, it is important to understand that small language models offer us a large part of the benefit with much lower cost, right? And cybersecurity is a very, very good use case. I mean, if you start thinking about, instead of having one model to rule them all and that does everything and it's magic, uh, think small, you know, look at an organization. It's not made by one person. Right? So yeah. why are we thinking? There's nobody, I mean, you know, only God is all capable. So why are we thinking that one model will do everything? On the other hand, so cybersecurity is a great use case where looking at specific pieces, specific patterns, you can go develop a lot of this. And I think I would, you know, strongly say what Abhilash said is a great point. Yeah. So before we close, right, Rahul, there's one question and I'll also dwell into answering that question. So uh, me, how can... Uh, AI be used. This is a question asked by audience. AI can be used to counter the cybersecurity AI based counter uh, attacks. Basically, for example, fake social media profile or fake video which is coming using AI. How can you counter by using AI? Is there a way to counter? I have some ideas to talk about, but I will like you to dwell into. Sure. So one of the good examples I've seen of this is so. Uh, Take social media and uh, I mean, including dating websites, dating sites where fake profiles are there, uh, all kinds of places. So if that person has taken an image from the internet, that image will be available to you as well. Right? It's a question of being able to use AI tools to see if there's dissonance. What I mean by dissonance is, so there is this profile, there's this photo and there's a name attached. Right. That's what you are looking at. Now, is that photo available with any other name in any other context that itself starts telling you that there is the belief levels drop. Right. So look, when you add more and more data, if data is not consistent, there is dissonance. That is absolutely a, a clear indication of risk. So. There are no I mean, I don't think they're magic bullets, silver bullets. Right. It's a question of thinking of risk and the level of risk and then acting accordingly, right? You're not challenged on a banking website for for everything all the time. It's except when you're doing major transactions, you are asked for a PIN, X, Y, Z. But if the site detects that you are actually acting in a malicious or odd manner, it can go ahead and throw that. That's coming through what? Through these patterns of data. So when there is dissonance in behavior, dissonance in data, there is risk. And look at that as one key aspect for AI solutions. As a, as a data security concept up in there, we, we try to look at how can you solve a deep fake problem. And there are three, four things which we come across. Right? So one is the so there is a something called as proven tracking. That's tracking uh, the origin and edit history of a digital media. So uh, so you can establish that this media is authentic or not. So there is a method for doing that basically, right? Then there is also a method for detecting temporal inconsistency, like identifying inconsistency across the video frames that could help you 
uh, uh, identify a particular content that is inconsistent uh, or made uh, for a particular reason or not, right? So then there is a uh, there is also detection model trained to using the adversarial technique. So those models can help you detect the uh, fake content actually. Right? Then there is, there is also uh, some because sometimes what happens the audio and video synchronization there could be some problem as well. So you can examine the synchronization basically. You can even uh, do the forensic analysis of a uh, of a defect creation tools and based on this forensic analysis you can say okay, whether this this has been used by this kind of a, a legitimate tool or not basically right and there are a lot of real-time detection models which are coming now which can help you to extract the feature extract the uh, entire frames and understand how exactly things are going and there are there are very specific accelerators accelerators which have been created to understand the content thrown and understand the audio or video which is coming to you as a deep fake uh, uh, thing right and then um, uh, what happens usually the deep fake is a multimodal uh, element right it may have visual audio textual and sometimes you can use this cross model consistency basically cross media consistency checking and that could help you to understand some of those uh, problems basically so the science of a defect uh, analysis is also evolving and there are a lot of interesting ai capabilities which are coming in recent past which can help you to understand defect problem much better basically right so just to close the conversation as i'm also mindful of the time uh, any last minute concluding abhilash starting with you and then Dawul, i'll come to you on that basically i think regulation can play a very important role especially for example fake video generation etc there are technologies like watermarking uh, where you create an image in a way that some portions are like mathematically provable that it has been created by ai systems things like those are also emerging so across the stack like um, for example nist has spoken about password which is privacy accountability safety security fairness explainability uh, uh, things and sustainability so uh, while technology is building there also needs to be governance around this. I think Indian government is taking a lot of good initiatives. I think um, this combination of tech and regulation would help us build a secure ecosystem for innovation at the same time safety for citizens. Thank you. Uh, Rahul, yeah, uh, sure, absolutely. So I will just say this is should be an active area for entrepreneurs to follow. It's going to be a massive area. The amount of fraud is just going up and up and up the amount of crime and AI just makes it easier to do all these bad actions and for bad actors. So, right. And I will just say that people should be thinking about how do they play a role in making this work? I mean, coming up with tools and, you know, just to Abhilash's point, it's the, what, whether it is watermarking there, you know, there'll be new content uh, proving the, you know, provenance of the content, right? One through techniques and after you see artifact, but at the generation point itself and watermarking being one. So these are all technologies which I think will play a large, much larger role than they do, do today uh, in the ecosystem. And that thus there is clear opportunity here to create new tooling. And I think as a part of this entire India uh, mission, and I believe ki, uh, some of these ideas that we just talked about, defect detection or defect audio, I think um, uh, in part of India mission, I think there is also responsible AI. And I think some of those, uh, somebody asked question about, ki, will there be some challenges on this or not, which will probably mighty will come uh, to you on these challenges. But yes, the ideas are welcome, like how to solve this problem. And I think... Um, uh, answering with that question. I really thank you, Abhilash and Rahul, for joining us today. And thank you, uh, Anurag and Mighty team to set up this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, thank you. And thank you all for joining today. And all of these questions are getting answered as well, uh, as you might have seen, all the questions about the hackathon. And we'll again look forward to see you uh, in the coming conversations as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Rahul. Thank nice. you. Thanks, Vinayak. Thanks. Nice. Thank you. thank you. Nice meeting you both. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, Abhilash. Thank you so much, esteemed panelists, for the wonderful love to answer. Uh, Kosambi, I think uh, for this question, 
already mentioned that you'll have to use uh, your own prudence uh, discretion to decide on how you want to go about it. That is the part of the challenge. Uh, 